73 was a very special year. You know, that's the year you and Agent Colin Wick uh, went after Bill Shoemaker's record, and you ended up smashing it. You hit the 500 mark, and of course, you did that with a horse named Charlie Jr. And uh, what was the moment like when when you when you when you hit that magical 500 mark? Well, that's uh, that was definitely the biggest role in my career, reaching number 500. Uh, we almost rode secretary in his last race, but Eddie Maple ended up picking up the mount from Ron Turcott when he got suspended. But so if I could have ridden secretary in his last race, that probably would have been the biggest role in my career. But um, yeah, yeah, I'd have to say when we won 500 races, that was our goal from the beginning of the year. And we ended up winning 515, but number 500 was uh, was the magic number. And when we reached that, uh, definitely the biggest role in my career was in Laurel, Maryland. Uh, for a trainer called, called Dickie Dutro, and it was a tremendous, tremendous thrill. Well, about that time, some of the heavyweights in, in the racing business at the time uh, weighed in on what uh, Sandy Hawley uh, meant to the sport at that time. Vic, if you could roll that, that clip for us. When I was in high school, I didn't really have a big idea of what I wanted to do, so I started bothering my uncle. I said, well, when are you going to take me out for an interview to see if I can be a jockey? So finally he called the National Stud Farm and we went out and I had an interview with a trainer by the name of Duke Campbell. And he looked at my hands and feet and said, well, I don't think you're going to grow too much more, so we'll give you a shot. I walked horses, groomed horses, and then I started galloping horses. I was on the racetrack for about three years before I ever got a chance to ride my first race. It's a tremendous thrill coming down the stretch, you know, head and head and just competing like that. I love competing. horses and I really enjoy racing and uh, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. It's just amazing that he can be so mild and have the fierce competitive spirit that he has. He is also equipped with all the attributes of a good rider. He's an excellent judge of pace. Horses seem to relax naturally for him and he has a great style and ability. Up till now he did more than any other jockey I guess in history. He's only been riding, what, four years, four or five years. It's, he's still young in his career. If he keeps improving, he could maybe be the greatest rider of all time. He has that potential. I don't compare top jockeys uh, ever. I just say there's no better jockey than Sandy Holly. <laughs> he's got the courage to win races. If he rides eight races a day, he wants to win eight races a day, and this means a lot. He's got a lot of ambition. Sandy Holly never quits riding a horse till he's past that finish line. Okay, so we heard from E.P. Taylor, Frankie Merrill, John Mooney, Lou Cavalier, that's some very high praise, Sandy, from, uh, you know, from that particular time. Well, you know, uh, hearing that from those people, that was tremendous. Uh, you know, I just went out there and did my job every day and, and tried my best. And, uh, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to my agent, Colin Wick, and Duke Campbell, who I first started with. Uh, I remember for um, uh, about a month, I kept saying to Mr. Campbell, I think I'm ready to start riding, Mr. Campbell. I think I'm ready to start riding. And he used to always say, Sandy, Sandy, just calm down. I'll know when you're ready. I'll know when you're ready. And, uh, you know, when he started me riding, uh, Colin Wick was my agent. And I couldn't have got a better agent. So I owe those two guys a lot of credit. But uh, hearing from the gentleman that, uh, you know, gave me such nice praise, it's quite an honor. Thank you. 